revolting in love. Remember this, then, Walker. Welcome tonight. Protests block in battle the your state capital over the scarcity of new Naira notes leading to the destruction of properties. Just as central bank governor Godwin Emefile rules out the possibility of extending the deadline for the swap of the old notes with the new ones. President Muhammadu Buhari asked Nigerians to give him seven days to resolve the challenge of Naira note swap across the country arising from the policy of the central bank of Nigeria. Inspector General of Police Usman Akali Baba orders arrest and prosecution of individuals engaged in sale and abuse of newly redesigned Naira notes. On business news tonight, 139 companies qualify for gas flare commercialization program in the country following evaluation exercise by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission. And on sports news tonight, boxing promoter Eddie Hearn announces that heavyweight Anthony Joshua's comeback fight will take place on April the 1st at the O2 Arena in London. And from Abuja, the nation's capital, clash between terrorists and vigilante group leaves 41 persons dead and several others injured in Casino States. Again, in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital, where some residents have taken to the streets in demonstration over what they describe as the harsh economic situation in the country. Several major roads were deserted while the protest lasted as the demonstrators barricaded many roads, burning tires. A commercial bank is also said to have been vandalized. The central bank governor, Mr. Gordon Mifele, says the bank is not open to extending the deadline for the phasing out of the old Naira notes, although he admits the exercise is currently experiencing some bottlenecks. The CBN boss was speaking at a joint media briefing with deposit bank representatives in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. Is CBN open to further extension of deadline? I would say no. I'm, so I'm sure that people are going to say, well, only last two Tuesday I said no. But I want to say, unfortunately, again, this time we will not be looking at extension of deadline because we are the central bank, the deposit money banks, and other very important stakeholders, we are looking at areas where there is pressure. And we are doing everything possible to address those areas of pressure. 
And I mean, we've had cases where in some areas, um, some bank branches had some cash in their vaults because there was no demand for them. We've asked central bank, uh, central bank officials, uh, when reported, they move those monies away from those locations and move them to areas where there is pressure. So those are some of the logistical, some of the logistical challenges that we face, and we're doing everything possible to to address it. So I am not going to make any promise to anyone that um, that there will be any uh, further extension of this deadline. Mr. Nifele also explains that the Apex Bank has rejigged some of the operations of the Cash Swap Initiative program to help ease the process in some pressure areas. At our last meeting held this morning, the CEOs of the bank reported that although CAM was beginning to return to their banking halls, there were still some areas of pressure and everything is being done to divert more resources to sort pressure points in order to ease the tension. The meeting further resolved to extend the cash swap initiative nationwide and expand the number of participating agents as well as formally include some of our microfinance banks in the cash swap initiative. We deployed 30,000 super agents nationwide to assist in a cash swap initiative in the hinterland our rural areas and regions underserved by banks in the country to ensure that the weak and vulnerable ones amongst us can swap or exchange their old notes. The CBN welcomed the participation of the EFCC and the ICPC, who also joined our monitoring teams nationwide, and this has further enhanced compliance at bank branches and agent locations. We are happy that so far, the exercise achieved a success rate of over 80% as about 2.7 trillion naira held outside the banking system has been returned. Nigerians in our rural areas, villages, the aged and vulnerable have had the opportunity to swap old notes, leveraging the agent naira swap initiative, as well as CBN senior staff nationwide sensitization team exercise. Well, staying with the redesigned notes, the River State Governor Yesung Wike is criticizing the introduction of the new Naira notes a few months to the end of the current administration, describing it as an anti-people policy. Governor Wike says apart from further impoverishing the poor masses, the policy will scale up the rate of crime in the country. The governor who was speaking at the River State PDP campaign in Okrika local government area said the scarcity of the new redesigned notes is capable of frustrating the funding of covert security operations by the state. This one is anti-people. This policy is one anti-people. You know it's not there. The new number is not there. Even when I have money in my account, I cannot get $10,000. I cannot get my jewel. Who is losing? Who is losing? The masses. It's not the masses. The masses. It's not the people. The people. Who can tell anybody? This period that telling you they are fighting politicians. Who told you? Who told you? You look at me here. That we are not prepared for this election. Oh. You are merely fighting against the poor people. So, Mr. Mr. President, I know, I know, I know the pressure, but please, since two of us are going the same time, <laughs> since two of us are going the same time, this policy. It has nothing to fight corruption at all at all. At all, at all. Fight politicians at all at all. At all. The policy aims to suffer the people who we have been, who elected us to govern over them. Our business is not to make people to suffer. We all know how to fight corruption. We all know how to fight politicians. This particular one, it does not come in at all. At all. Okay. 
said, anywhere in this world, anywhere in this world, where you are changing money, and within six months, he said, no more use of old uh, old income. It doesn't work. It takes time. You have to prepare. Look at our economy. Look at the rural areas. The level of literacy in the country. Our mothers, our fathers, who only sell and get cash. Now, that's nothing like that. And for President Muhammadu Buhari, he is asking Nigerians to give him seven days to resolve the cash crunch that has become a problem across the country due to the policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Addressing members of the Progressive Governors Forum who came to the presidential villa to seek solutions to the cash crunch, which they say is threatening the good records of the administration, the president reassures that the currency redesign will give a boost to the economy and provide long-term benefits. He also expressed doubt about the commitment of banks in particular to the success of the policy. Our State House correspondent, Gloria Mizuke, has more. Governors under the Progressives Governors Forum arrived at the presidential villa carrying one major concern, the Naira swap. The latest policy from the Central Bank of Nigeria that is generating reactions from Nigerians. The situation has compelled the governors to seek audience with the president at the council chamber. After the closed door meeting, the governors declined to officially address the media, but Governor Abdullahi Ganduji of Kano State affirms that the president promised to weigh in on the situation. The old currency should go along with the new currency until the old currency dies a natural death, which is possible. He said he will look into that. Moments after, the senior special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Garba Shehu, issues a statement declaring that the president has asked for seven days to resolve the cash crunch. He says, I will revert to the CBN and the Milton Company. There will be a decision one way or the other in the remaining seven days of the 10-day extension. The president also stated that the banks are inefficient and only concerned about themselves. If another year is added, problems associated with selfishness and greed won't go away. <laughs> Making no bones about plans to clamp down on those sabotaging the successful implementation of the policy after he received assurances from the CBN governor that Nigeria has the capacity to produce its own currency. President Buhari attested to watching television reports about cash shortages and hardship to both local businesses and ordinary Nigerians. Some of the governors here, including Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State, agree that the policy on the Nara redesign is a good one, but also asked the president to impress it on the CBN governor to allow a co-circulation of the old and new notes. The problem is that the money in circulation is not enough. Uh, I you propose that your two notes run concurrently so that you do not affect the election. The president's seven days request coincides with the CBN's deadline of February 10 for the currency swap. From the presidential villa. In part two, after the 2023 general election, Facebook officials over rising cases of fake news and misinformation ahead of the elections. That's this is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. Protests rock Ibado, the Oyo State capital, over scarcity of new Naira notes, leading to the destruction of properties. Oh, Just the certainty of extending deadline for the swap of the old notes with the new ones. President Muhammadu Buhari asked Nigerians to give him seven days to resolve the challenge of Naira note swap across the country. Inspector General Police Usman Al-Khali Baba orders arrest and prosecution of individuals engaged in the sale and abuse of newly redesigned Naira notes. And U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken holds his trip to China after a Chinese spy balloon flew across the United States.
And still on the Naira, the Inspector General of Police, Mana Kali Baba, has ordered the arrest and prosecution of individuals engaged in the sale and abuse of the newly redesigned Naira note. The IGP stated this by directing the Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of the Force Criminal Investigations Department and the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of the Force Intelligence Bureau to place officers and men of the department and bureau across the nation on high alert to apprehend the culprits. A statement by the uh, relations officer, Force's Public Relations Officer, says all supervisory assistant inspectors, general of police, and commissioners of police in charge of police commands and formations have also been charged to carry out full enforcement of the provisions of sections 20 and 21 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Act 2007. The IGP reiterates the mandates of the Nigeria police to enforce all laws and regulations as he solicits the cooperation of Nigerians in helping the police to bring the long arm of the law to bear on all violators of the provisions of the CBN Act and other extant laws in the country. And to political campaigns, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter L. B., has assured residents of Abia and the Boeing State of the party's commitment to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. He made the commitment during his campaigns in both states. According to him, he is in the race to build a new Nigeria where millions of Nigerians will no longer live in poverty. Without the campaign train of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, pays a visit to Aba, one of the commercial centers of southeast Nigeria. <laughs> Accompanied by the party's governorship candidate for Abia State, Mr. Alex Oti, the presidential candidate is received by supporters as they march through major roads, including Aba Main Park, St. Michael Road, Aba Shopping Center by Kent, and Azikiri Road. campaign train then moves to the Umayya International Conference Center for a town hall meeting with Abia monarchs and youths, where special prayers were offered for him. He believes he remains the best man for the job. candidate of the Labour Party for Abia State, Mr. Alex Oti says, if voted, he will focus on creating wealth and industrializing the states. I can assure you that we Train then moves to Abakalike, the Eboye State Capital. At the Township Stadium, the venue of the rally, Mr. Peter Obi is received by his supporters. He explains his plan to ensure businesses thrive under his administration. is urging the people to go out and vote for their candidates on the 25th of February 2023 while ensuring that their votes count. Dili Omoyeni, Channels Television News. Well, for the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Bola Tinubu, he is promising to create employment opportunities for Nigerian youth if elected president come February 25, 2023. Addressing a rally in Adoikiti, Senator Tinubu appealed to Nigerian youth to ensure they pick up their permanent voter cards in order to enthrone an APC government that will guarantee better lives for them. He adds that the 2023 general election is a critical one that requires the massive participation of young people. <laughs> 
Kathmandu Ekiti, the capital of Ekiti State, comes alive as the campaign team of the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, storms the city with a message of renewed hope. Leaders of the party in Ekiti State ask supporters to embark on a door-to-door -door campaign in the state to ensure that the APC wins the 2023 presidential election. We have all decided that we will all vote for Ashiwaju. You asked me to tell Ashiwaju that we shall vote for him. Is that not so? This is our election. It is not Jagaban's turn, but ours. Because Jagaban has done his own. You know the battles we have fought. This is our time to pay back by supporting Jagaban on the 25th of February and all APC candidates. Bubbling with excitement, the APC presidential candidate assures a gathering of massive employment if elected as president. Be rest assured, this election is your own. Is that not so? It is an election that will guarantee your freedom. Unemployed youths are many and they graduated from school. They deserve jobs. <laughs> The APC presidential candidate had earlier visited the palace of the Ewi of Adoikiti. We're back in River State, where the People's Democratic Party in the state has taken its governorship campaign to Africa local government area at the grounds. Governor Yasunwike addressed issues relating to the controversy over the use of the venue for the party's presidential rally. He also seized the opportunity to call on indigents to ensure they vote wisely during the upcoming general election. <laughs> Comprehensive secondary school field Ibaka in the ancient Okrika local government area is well occupied as the People's Democratic Party in River State holds its rally to canvass for the people's vote. This campaign is important as the PDP in the state pushes hard to exert complete dominance over external and internal party oppositions. On his part, the governorship candidate promises to build on Governor Wike's achievement and also sustain the peace in the area. What am I going to do as an adopted son is to ensure that the peace that this LGA is enjoying Right from 2015, I will ensure that I sustain it. Also addressing the supporters, Governor Yeson Wike seizes the moment to respond to the issues raised by the PDP Presidential Campaign Council over the reversal of the approval for the use of a venue for its campaign. Some people said, I cancelled venue because I was afraid of the massive mobilization they want to do. Fine. Mobilize it for vote. You don't need to mobilize it for vote. They know they are jubilating. That was why they caused the crisis that led us 
to cancel that verdict because they know they would have been exposed that they have nobody to put us. If we pay for God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Earlier, Governor Wike commissioned a 100-bed mother and child hospital that was facilitated by House of Representatives member from the area through the Presidential Office on Sustainable Development Goals. Still ahead on the news at 10, 139 companies qualify for gas flare commercialization program in the country following evaluation exercise by the Nigerian Mainstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission. That's on Business News. Please stay with us. and the federal government says it is worried about the rising cases of fake news and disinformation that could threaten the integrity of the exercise. The Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, expresses the concern of the government about the spread of fake news and disinformation when he met with officials of Google and Meta, owners of Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram in Abuja. According to Mr. Mohammed, there is a sharp rise in the number of fake news and disinformation as the 2023 general elections draw closer. Go off to Abuja for more stories. Linda is standing by. Hi, Linda. At least 41 persons have been killed following a clash between terrorists and proscribed security group in Katina State on Thursday night. The incident comes a day after a terrorist in their numbers attacked the house of one Alaji Muntari on Wednesday night at Ungwa Audugari Kandarawa Ward in Bakori local government area and rustled about 50 cows and 30 sheep. A statement by the police spokesman in Kasina State, Espiga Boisa, notes that a proscribed group from 11 villages in Bakori local government area regrouped and went after the terrorists with a view to recovering the rustled animals. According to him, the vigilante members further traced the footpath of the hoodlums to a location at Yagoje Forest, where the terrorists planned and launched a coordinated ambush on the group. He asked that the terrorists shot and killed 41 members of the vigilante group and wounded several others. Meanwhile, Governor Samuel Autumn has described as inhumane the attempt to link him with the killing of about 40 herdsmen at Takwanaja, a community in Doma, local government area of Nasarawa State. Mr. Autumn, who addressed a press conference in Makodi, the Benue State capital, condemned the deadly drone attack, but said that his government had nothing to do with it. According to him, a group had petitioned the president on the Nasarawa attack, alleging that his government was behind the incident. When I heard about the bomb attacks in Doma, in which Pantorans were alleged to be killed, I visited my counterpart, the governor of Nasarawa State, Governor Adulai Isule, and sympathized with him and his people over the loss of the son and the victims of the bomb cases. Some died by the issue of the bomb incident. I don't know. I have not done my investigation. I don't know what was the real reason whether as claimed whether they are terrorists or not. I don't know. But I sympathize with it because human life is sacred and should not be wasted. But the narrative again that people came to retrieve their cattle that came into the state and were arrested and uh, took it and were killed is not true. In the first place, when cattle are arrested by the provisions of our law, uh, within seven days, the law permits that the government retain them. If you don't come, we have the right to auction them 
I must state categorically that the state government under my leadership has no hand in the Apanaja incident. I know nothing about that. It came to me as news just like any other person. Linking me with the bomb attacks in Doma, Nasara said is the most unfair thing anyone will do to me. How I am connected to the collected or responsible for what did not take place in my own state. Akpanaja is in Doma local government area of Nasarawa State. So how do I account for what did not take place in Benue State? To the judiciary, the Supreme Court has affirmed Mr. Kefas Apple as a governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Taraba State. The living judgment, the five-man panel of justices, led by Justice Emmanuel Agim, upheld the decision of the Court of Appeal, Yola Adamawa State, to dismiss two different suits, challenging the eligibility of Mr. Abu as a candidate of the party in Taraba State. And staying with legal matters, the Federal High Court Abuja has fixed March the 7th to begin hearing in the case filed by the spokesperson of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, Mr. Fessos Kayabo, seeking the investigation and prosecution of the presidential candidate of the PDP, Mr. Tiku Abubakar, over corruption allegations. The judge also ordered that all the court processes in the suit filed be served on Mr. Abubakar by dropping them at the Atiku campaign office or pasting them on the premises of that office. Mr. Kayamu had on January 16th given an ultimatum to the Code of Conduct Bureau, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to arrest Mr. Abubakar. Mr. Kayamu based his suit on the allegations made by one Michael Achimugu, who claims to be a former aide to the PDP presidential candidate. Atimugu, in a series of social media posts, accused Mr. Atiku of using special purpose vehicles to engage in financial transactions in breach of ICPC and EFCC acts. Away from the judiciary, students of the University of Benin in Benin City, the Edo State Capital, barricaded a section of the Benin Lagos Road earlier today in protest against an attack allegedly carried out against the school which led to the destruction of window panes and other items at the security building and injury of some workers in the security and fire service units. The vice chancellor of the university had in a statement released on Friday appealed for calm as effort was on to avert a recurrence of Thursday's incident. Neither the army nor the Edo State Police Command have released a statement on the incident at the time of this report. The University of Benin students block a section of the Benin Lagos Road just outside the main campus gates at Oboa. The reason for the protest is an incident which occurred on Thursday afternoon at an ATM point within the school's premises when some persons alleged to be soldiers reportedly asked the students to give way for them to use the machine. A girl with her phone was holding her phone and the next in their face happened giving them the chance to make withdrawals. She was videoing them. On that one, they took the phone and they smashed the phone. And they started embarrassing most of the students that were there. Now, when these things kept happening, the girl actually ran to the security department. They called the female soldier to slap her. The female soldier slapped her. Then she ran to the school to get coverage and to get shelter. Getting there, the soldier men pursued her there. They will snap the chief security officer of Inventor of Benin. The SUG president explains that the afternoon incident was only part of the attack, as more allegedly followed that night. A call staff at the fire service unit corroborate. At about after 12 to 1 o'clock, we got an update. We saw and we heard of spontaneous shooting, radical shooting in the main gate. They entered, the school gate was already locked. How they entered the boat, we, we don't know. We can't tell till now. Long, long cause, like, West Coast, Lago, Daika, Long Wala is the one they do. They use that one, they won't put my easy down block. This, that is the, that is the one for this day. I used to block it. The other one used to do for me. No, no, no. Scenes of destruction run from the security building, where window panes and security cameras are smashed, and within the school's premises, where vehicles were also damaged. 
yesterday, when we're about to close, go to the gate here, found out there was blockage. There was no way to go out. And so eventually I have to park my car here. But this morning when I got here, I found it damaged. The students appeal that relevant authorities look into the matter. We have been pissed off, we are still pissed off. We are only appealing to open our authority for them to ensure that our safety in this state dry university of Benin is guaranteed. The students eventually cleared the road for traffic to flow, but maintain they will not give up on seeking justice and a guarantee of their safety. Jessica Lucas, Channel. <laughs> And for business news. Thank you. So to business news. To begin with some company news, Samsung Nigeria has unveiled the next generation of its Galaxy S23 series in Nigeria. The smartphone giant announced the latest addition to its Galaxy S series with a batch of new Galaxy S23 smartphones, including the base model S23 Plus and S23 Ultra, the smartphone with the re-engineered nitrographic camera and the revolutionary gaming processor. It's indeed an epic night as Samsung Nigeria launches its Galaxy S23 series. Have 3,900 milliamp and 4,700 milliamp, respectively. The series, Samsung's first major flagship smartphones in 2023, comes with upgrades in camera quality, battery capacity, processor, and other exciting features. So your smartphone can regulate its temperature while maintaining powerful performance. The company says professional content creators, cinematographers, photographers, and others in the creative space now have a device they can rely on. It's also a smartphone that reflects the people who use it with our most personalized and re refined capabilities and incredibly versatile AI camera capabilities for creating contents that stands out from the crowd. The smartphones are unveiled. The series comes in different colors, shapes, and sizes. Businessman Obi <laughs> Kubana is a person, the new S23 Ultra. I am not poisoned for the constant show of love and appreciation. I keep receiving these phones from this company not because I'm the only user but because we appreciate my patronage. I'm not the only customer you have in Nigeria and the world, but at every point you guys are about to honor me with brand new latest phones. Thank you very much. I love Samsung. I will always be a loyal user of Samsung. It's time for customers experience. Guests at this event are not only catching a glimpse, they want more. Please do us a favor when you're done with the experience area. On the sideline, the company's management speaks on the smartphone and the company's goal. We are giving more customers opportunity to have flexibility in terms of payment for these devices. So with Alert by Wema, which is a digital banking system, you will have easy facility to, and easy accessibility to fund to pay. These devices equally come with fantastic battery and there are special uh, uh, technological advancement that we included on these particular uh, devices. So we call them the AI optimizer. All three phones are already available for pre-order from the Samsung website with shipping and third-party retailers selling the phones from February 17, 2023. And further on to the Petroleum Industry Act 2021, the Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization Program, which had 300 companies registered, has deemed 139 of these companies qualified following an evaluation exercise. Speaking at the program conference in Abuja, the Director General of the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, Minga Komalafe, explains further. 
It's another win for the local stock markets as it ends today's trading session with impressive gains which has so far dominated the week. Will Evong has the details. Welcome to the stock market report. It's the ultimate trading day of the week and the market has made a monster move. The All Share Index has hit a major milestone and not running out of steam. You see the All Share Index crossed the 54,000 level in today's trading session. Stocks are on the move as they rally on the back of earnings. Let's look at the sector performance and the major indexes are in the green as we can see the banking sector made a rebound in today's trading session after trading negative in yesterday's trading session now the boost in the industrial boost sector we owe to lafarge we did however not see huge turnover like yesterday volume and value traded lower volume was 268 million units traded value 2.35 billion there we saw a slight uptick in yields but let's see who made it on the top leaderboard today we see ftn coco on that counter leading 10 percent to close at 33 cobble and the red tie express also made that list there will always be stocks at the losing end and Kedja Hotel led the way there. A smashing performance for the NGX and another green close for the week. And that's the stock market report. And Will Ebong is back to you. Thank you, Will. Now let's find out how major markets around the world fared at the close of trade today. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. Have a wonderful weekend. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first. first. In business, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has postponed his trip to China after a Chinese spy balloon flew across the United States. A senior State Department official says conditions were not right at this time for what would have been the first high-level U.S.-China meeting there in years. Summer Pusey has more international news and around the world in five. Good international news around the world in five. The United States is tracking a suspected Chinese surveillance balloon that has been spotted flying over sensitive sites in recent days. Defense officials said they were confident the high-altitude surveillance balloon belonged to China. It was most recently seen above the western state of Montana. The military decided against shooting it down in case debris falls. In a media briefing, a Chinese foreign spokesperson warned against speculation until the facts are verified. This floating of a, a surveillance balloon over the United States is uh, untimely. It's either a provocation on the part of the Chinese, uh, it's a mistake, one part of the government doesn't know what the other part of the government is doing, uh, or it's just a standard operating procedure. A Kenyan court has sentenced to death a former policeman for the murder of a human rights lawyer and two others in a case which triggered national outrage. Two other policemen and a civilian were also sentenced to between 20 and 30 years for the murder of lawyer Willie Kimani, his client and a taxi driver in June 2016. The four were found guilty of three counts, including murder in July 2022. After a fully subscribed FBO. A U.S. research firm's allegations of fraud against billionaire Gautam Adani's business empire have sparked a political row in India. The opposition, all the opposition parties, unitedly wanted discussion on this extremely important issue. Opposition leaders, including the leader of India's main opposition party, stalled the functioning of parliament for a second day on Friday as they demanded an investigation into the claims. The research firm accused Adani Group firms of stock manipulation and financial fraud last week. The group has denied the allegations. Up to 40 countries could boycott the next Olympic Games, making the whole event pointless. That's according to Poland's sport and tourism minister. His comments came after Poland, Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia 
jointly rejected an international Olympic Committee plan to allow Russians and Belarusians to compete in 2024. Ukraine has threatened to boycott the Paris Olympics if that occurs, but the IOC says any boycott would only punish athletes. Video released by the Australian Maritime Safety Authority shows three people clinging to a floating icebox in the sea off Eclipse Island in Western Australia. Local media reported three fishermen were in the water after the boat capsized in rough seas, 17 kilometres south of the town of Albany. An emergency beacon had alerted rescuers who found the men all wearing life jackets and clinging to the ice box. Pope Francis has wrapped up an emotional visit to Democratic Republic of Congo and has headed to neighboring South Sudan and other nations struggling to overcome conflict and poverty. Francis received a warm welcome from hundreds of thousands of faithful in Kinshasa since his arrival, where he returned again and again to the theme of conflict fueled by the poison of greed. After a meeting with Congolese bishops in Kinshasa on Friday morning and a farewell ceremony at the airport, his plane took off for Juba. In a first, the Pope will be accompanied during his time in the South Sudanese capital by the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Church of Scotland moderator. Texas is the epicenter of a huge feral hog problem in the United States, that's according to farmers. First introduced to North America by early explorers hundreds of years ago, the hogs can wreak havoc on agriculture, tearing up soil and eating plants. The problem has become so acute that companies have been employed to shoot them from helicopters. According to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, an estimated 6.9 million feral hogs roamed the United States in 2016, with more than one third of that population living in Texas. And devotees in Rio de Janeiro have gathered to celebrate the day of Yamanja, the Afro-Brazilian queen of the sea. Dozens dressed in white and traditional costumes and met at Rio de Janeiro's beach to pay tribute to the Yamanja goddess with flowers dropped in the sea and rituals to the rhythm of drums. Yamanja is one of the deities of the Yoruba religion and has become prominent among Afro-American cultures. The tradition was brought over to Brazil by enslaved African people hundreds of years ago. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channels.